Today we're starting on Project Ron Burgundy. We're doing basic tune-up first and foremost. Gonna do a valve adjustment, cam chain tensioner adjustment, and I'm also gonna tune up some of the ignition system here. Let's roll that intro. Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Mike Barker. I know it's been like four weeks since I made a video, so I'm sorry, like genuinely sorry. I really wish I could pump these out like every day, but you know, life is busy. Regardless, thank you so much for tuning in again, guys. I really, truly appreciate it. Today, back on Project Ron Burgundy. So for the things we're working on today, you're gonna wanna make sure that the engine is cold, icy cold, no heat cold. The manual says to adjust the valves, the engine should be cold. With things like your spark plugs, I've always found that when you're trying to thread spark plug into a warm engine. It can be a little bit of a recipe for disaster because things seem to get awfully easy to cross thread or remove threads. Anyway, recommend doing it with the engine cold. Let's start off by replacing some spark plugs and some resistor caps, which I've already done a couple of. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish replacing the spark plug caps on this. What I usually like to do is nip these back about a quarter of an inch so I've got some fresh wire to make contact with. I just wanna make sure that this thing has the best spark possible um, before I go playing with the timing and doing some of the other things. So there is a way to check the resistance of your spark plug caps, and I'll share that with you guys in another video, although I'm sure if you, you know, poke around on YouTube long enough, you can find a video on it. But um, my spark plug caps were measuring a little bit too close to what we would consider worn out. Oh, before I get too far, the two spark plug resistor covers that you want to use for the outside for cylinders one and four are, uh, I believe they're called a uh, 120 degree spark plug cap. This is the part number, this is the one that I used. The two most inward spark plug resistor caps are just a straight cap. They're not angled like the last ones. And again, this is the one that I used. I can tell these have been shortened up multiple times already. simple like you basically just thread this on until you feel a little bit of resistance and then you know that that screw that's on the inside of that cap has really bit into that wire really well. I am using my pliers to get this cover just down over that lip though. Just being careful though you don't want to tear those nice brand new boots on your spark plug caps. Now see somebody didn't really know what they were doing last time because here's a 90 degree um, spark plug cap. Like I've had three different types of spark plug resistor caps on this thing. I've had the angled ones. I've had these more 90 degree ones. It's just, uh, it's just a pain, but it's easy. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's probably why I have a weak spark in a lot of places. That just fell off in my hand and oh, it's so nasty looking. Wow, fun with old bikes, I tell ya. I do love it though. Huh, that's kind of funny. One of my two new NGK spark plug caps doesn't have the NGK painted white. Something missed at the factory maybe. That one doesn't look clean. A little wet from fuel maybe, but I think the last time I had this bike started, I literally just fired it up for a half a second and probably didn't get hot enough to burn off all that extra fuel. For those of you who don't maybe own a CB750, the two spark plugs, cylinders two and three, are just so nice to remove. I'm being facetious, clearly. They're in a hateful, hateful spot. Same deal, a little black. Not looking too bad though, kind of tan in on the electrode a bit. Moving on. I'm 
gonna take this time to do a couple more basic maintenance things on this engine. I'm gonna adjust the cam chain tensioner. I'm gonna check all the valve clearances, intake and exhaust sides. So the cam chain tensioner, for those who don't know, is way, way inside here. Let's see if we can focus on it. Boop. See the little nut bolt down here? We're gonna adjust that off and the cam chain tensioner, if it works, should adjust automatically. So really, what you have to do is there's a lock nut first, back the lock nut off, and then adjust the bolt down or unthread the bolt down. It should all automatically adjust itself because it's kind of, it's just like a spring-loaded mechanism. I could take this rate off and check to see if the mechanism is working. The other thing you can do though, is you can take a small object because the back end of this, there's a shaft that runs inside here. The back end of this is actually open. So if you can get something inside here, you can actually give it a little push just to see if it's stuck or if it's working freely. And then you tighten it back up, cinch the lock up back up. Well, now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead, pull the gas tank off so I can check all the valves, make sure all those clearances are just spot on. There's a leaky gas line here, apparently. This is a really good fuel line. So with the gas tank off, you can see that we now have access to all eight of these tappet covers. Ahead and remove the points cover here. Oh, which god damn it, this fire is in the way. Silly. This is like totally ridiculous. All right, I think that's down far enough that I can just kind of work around this now. There we go. No Dyna ignition in here. Oh wow, that looks. Guess I'm gonna be checking my uh, points clearances too. Hoo hoo. That one's really loose. If it's that top dead center, this should be loose. Sounds loose to me. The valve clearances should be set to two thousandths of an inch for the intake and three thousandths of an inch for the exhaust side. Could be a little tighter. So get out your trusty feeler gauges. It's time to make some adjustments. Then you're gonna rotate the crank around 360 degrees so you can get the number one cylinder. I might just leave that O-ring right there. It seems to have uh, bonded itself to the cylinder head. After this, I didn't show it, but you line up the timing mark for cylinders two and three, figure out which one of those is that top dead center by the little rattle rattle method, and repeat. Rotate around another 360 so you get the opposite cylinder. Okay, well, I got all the valves adjusted. They were pretty close. There was a little tweaking here and there. I have to be honest with you though, I, oh, adjusting valves is, I can understand why people have modern motorcycles. Let's put it that way. But it's done now and I don't have to touch it again for many, many miles. In the next episode, we'll continue on with some more basic maintenance items and maybe some not so basic ones. Uh, two things we gotta do first, check the points gap, adjust the timing. Until then though guys, uh, feel free to check out some of the other videos in this project, or maybe some in this one. I'll post a link, you know the deal. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Don't forget, everybody says this the same way. You know what, hit the like, hit the subscribe, blah, blah. Regardless guys, if you're following along and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Don't forget, hit the bell for the notifications. And yeah, until the next episode, 
Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Laters.